All right, what's up, you guys? I'm here with a video series that was requested, basically ranking all the pay-per-view DVDs, so in turn, ranking every WWE pay-per-view by year. So this series will take a little while due to all the research that goes into it. But, um, yeah, I already did 2018 and 2017, so I'm going to make a playlist uh, with this one included and all the subsequent videos after this. 2016, though, was a very different year for WWE. You know, we were still in the PG era, you know, and then mid-2016, we were seeing changes. And early 2016 just felt like the same old garbage we've been getting for years. But then we had the new era as they called it and which brought the second brand split which was very exciting so i think this year can really be sectioned off into two different time periods and you know i liked the ending of 2016 and that was the first time i liked anything wwe did in a long time um except for like wrestlemania 30 and 31 there's not much to write home about during this you know pg era from 2008 to you know, at the time, mid-2016. So, speaking of nothing to write home about, dead last, we have Fastlane. Um, okay, let me put it this way. This year for 2016, I don't think had any absolute shit pay-per-views. It has bad pay-per-views, but not like absolute like crown jewel shit. So Fastlane, we saw uh, Chris Jericho and AJ Styles continuing continuing on with the rivalry. Uh, we had your main event, which was the predictable, Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose versus Brock Lesnar. And the winner would go on to WrestleMania 32 in the main event, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cared. It was predictable. We all knew who was winning the main event of WrestleMania this year. And nobody gave a shit. Uh, except for the Roman Reigns fans. And, I mean, that leads me to the next one on this list. WrestleMania 32. You all know by now how much I hate this pay-per-view. But this is unbiased. I try to be as unbiased as I can on this channel. And this pay-per-view does have some positive points. Uh, the opening ladder match was great. The women's triple threat match was great. And yeah, that's about it. So we had Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar in a very disappointing match that I was really looking forward to. The Hell in a Cell match was just literally the slowest, not methodical slow in a good way, just a slow bout with, I mean, we all kind of knew Shane was coming off the top, which is fine, but that was kind of predictable. And it's just so much potential leading into the storyline of Undertaker and Shane McMahon. And they just took the easy way out by having Taker win clean. And, you know, your main event was Triple H versus Roman Reigns. And the crowd was really sent home just unsatisfied and unhappy. They didn't care about your main event. And that's a problem. Main event of WrestleMania should be the biggest match of the year. Especially when it's for the title. So, yeah, just a very disappointing WrestleMania one of my top five least favorite WrestleManias of all time. Next up, we have Roadblock, End of the Line. Uh, we are well into the brand split here. This was the Raw pay-per-view. Uh, we had the 30-minute Iron Man match with um, Charlotte and Sasha Banks. You know, this match was good, but it didn't quite... You know, I feel like they were going for the takeover magic, trying to replicate that. But, you know, it just really didn't do it... It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's nowhere near the NXT Iron Man match. And then we had Seth Rollins and Chris Jericho. And then um, Kevin Owens versus uh, Roman Reigns, who was the United States champion at the time. This is an example of a pay-per-view that really is just forgotten, and it's just not necessary. Like, if you never saw this pay-per-view, you're good. You don't need to. It really brings nothing to the table. Next up, we have Clash of Champions 2016. This was the first Raw pay-per-view. Uh, we had uh, Rusev versus Roman Reigns for the United States Championship. 
we saw TJ Perkins um, defending the Cruiserweight title for the first time, which really was cool at the time. And, you know, it's not a bad pay-per-view. Like, like I said, this year, just, like, we're kind of out of the bad pay-per-views already. And that's a good thing. It's just Clash of Champions is another one of those where it really didn't feel needed. But at the same time, you know, you had an average pay-per-view. And, of course, you had Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho continuing on with their just phenomenal storyline. And, you know, you have Kevin Owens as a Universal Champion, and that worked really well. And I was happy to see that. Next up, we have Payback 2016. Uh, we had Chris Jericho and Dean Ambrose, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. And then we had Roman Reigns facing, for the first time ever, AJ Styles. You know, AJ Styles making his um, really big impact in the company at the time, especially after WrestleMania. You know, this was a really good main event between them two, but I don't think quite as good as their Extreme Rules main event, but this was still a really good one. And, you know, even on the back it says, Welcome to the new era of WWE, and it really did feel special at the time, you know, this big brand split shift. And then that kind of leads me into the next pay-per-view, Extreme Rules 2016. You know, this one really topped Payback. I feel like it was almost like a sequel to Payback in a lot of ways. You know, you have Chris Jericho and Dean Ambrose again in the Asylum match, which really didn't feel all that special, to be honest. Um, you know, it's just kind of there. Like, it's... I don't know. They, you could tell they tried to be edgier with it, but at the same time, I don't know. I just kind of felt like they didn't have much chemistry together, but whatever. And then, of course, the main event was Roman Reigns and AJ Styles once again. And then Seth Rollins making his surprise return there. So, you know, that was, that was really cool at the time. Next up, we have Backlash 2016, which was not released on DVD which is still, to this day, the number one question I get asked. Why wasn't it released? Um, that and No Mercy were not released. They were the two SmackDown shows. They weren't released because they really didn't know what to do with them at the time. This was before the double features. I wish they would get released, but they're not, so it is what it is. You know, I feel like this pay-per-view, you know, I, it was very average, but at the same time, it's really only going to be known for one thing. And that's AJ Styles beating Dean Ambrose for the WWE title, for his first WWE title reign. Uh, you had The Miz and Dolph Ziggler in a very strong singles match, and they had a phenomenal rivalry here. Um, you know, it's just a great rivalry at the time. I think their No Mercy match was much better, but we will get to that later on the list. So next up we have Hell in a Cell 2016. Sasha Banks versus Charlotte in your main event in the first ever women's Hell in a Cell match. And then we also had Rusev and Roman Reigns in a Hell in a Cell match, as well as Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins in Hell in a Cell. So this was, you know, I think when I think of the Hell in a Cell pay-per-views, I think this is kind of on the stronger end at points. But the main event... Um, I'm not going to say I was disappointed because I already didn't expect much from it. But it just, you could tell they were both really trying. But I felt like they were being held back. Which was confirmed when Charlotte said that, I think she did an interview of some type. Where she said she basically had a lot more ideas. But being it was the first ever women's Hell in a Cell match, they more wanted to play it safe. And I don't respect that, to be honest. So, you know, let them go all out. You know, let them have... You know, this insane main event. You know, I just... I think it was just a little watered down for their match. And it was a great rivalry at the time, so I feel like it kind of needed this brutal Hell in a Cell match. But hey, it's 2016, we're not going to get that. Next up, I'm going to go with No Mercy 2016, uh, which opened with the WWE title match. And, you know, which was kind of strange at the time. But, you know, of course you had AJ Styles defending against Dean Ambrose and John Cena. And I really enjoyed this match. 
as well as the Intercontinental Championship match with The Miz and Dolph Ziggler. This was phenomenal. Like, these two matches were really good, whereas the rest is just kind of there. But I was enjoying these brands' pay-per-views, just like we did get in the early, well, more mid-2000s. Um, like, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, they did them. So, you know, I really enjoyed these brand pay-per-views, and I'm upset to see them gone. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. But No Mercy was a good example of how to do a SmackDown pay-per-view. It really integrated the SmackDown talent very well, and they just did a phenomenal job. And, you know, I really, really liked this pay-per-view when it aired. Next up, we have a very divisive pay-per-view. People either love it or they hate it. Um, I liked it, but um, it's not. It's definitely not the best pay-per-view of the year or anything. But we have SummerSlam 2016. Um, you know, I did a review of this pay-per-view uh, in my SummerSlam series. And, you know, Seth Rollins and Finn Balor had a good Universal title match to crown your first Universal Champion. And this was your first real look at what this new era was going to be. AJ Styles and John Cena had a great match. I almost said phenomenal match, but I don't want to get the pun there, so... Fuck it. They had a phenomenal match, and, you know, you had your main event, which was kind of just a... Not really a built-up match, but just more of an attraction, which was Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar. I liked the ending. At the time, yes, it was disappointing. I'd rather see a good, like, 20-minute match between these two. You know, it's like the battle of the OVW wrestlers, man. It was cool at the time. I was excited for it. And it just, you know, the ending was good. Like, it served its purpose. But for the main event, I don't know. But other than that, I think it's an enjoyable pay-per-view. There is some filler in there, obviously. But you're going to have that with a SummerSlam. Next up, we have TLC 2016. This is a pay-per-view I really enjoyed, especially the main event. Um, the booking in the main event was shit at the very end, but we'll get to that. But, you know, this was just, you know, your first... I think this was the first SmackDown pay-per-view that was released on DVD um, for the second brand split. But we had The Miz and Dolph Ziggler in a ladder match, which continuing on with their rivalry. So, you know, that's just... Enough said there. Uh, we had Becky Lynch defending against Alexa Bliss, which she won. So that was cool. I was excited about that. And your main event was AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose for the WWE Championship. And this was a great TLC match. It really was. Until James Ellsworth showed up. And had his little heel turn. Blah, blah, blah. Fuck James Ellsworth. I never liked him. Especially when you're having this great TLC main event. The last thing you want to see is him come in and fuck up the ending. So I was not happy about that. But um, number four, we have Royal Rumble 2016. This is really well known for AJ Styles making his debut, of course. And it was rumored at the time, but it was one of those things where it just kind of felt too good to be true. Like, you almost felt like he was above the WWE. But, you know, look where we are now. He's still going strong, you know, almost five years later. So, you know, we had a great Royal Rumble match. I really enjoyed it. And we had uh, Kevin Owens and Dean Ambrose in their um, last man standing match for the Intercontinental Championship, uh, which was actually a very strong match. And like I said, the Royal Rumble match itself really served its purpose. I know, Triple H, blah, blah, blah. It was kind of predictable, but I liked that. I liked this Triple H winning the title. It was like one of those fuck you moments, but it was, that's the point. So I really... I mean, yeah, Triple H winning the title, I know, it's just, at the time, it's just kind of eye-rolling, but it worked, you know, it's, and it definitely built up to the WrestleMania main event, which I was critical of, but I just felt like this pay-per-view had the perfect ending for what they were going for. 
Next up, we have, this is where it gets difficult, because these are three really good pay-per-views. Believe it or not, Battleground. This was a great pay-per-view. This was the first pay-per-view of the new era, Brand Split. Um, continuing on with the Cena and AJ Styles rivalry, we had the club versus John Cena, Enzo, and Big Cass in a six-man tag match. Uh, you had Randy Orton in a good Chris Jericho highly real segment. And then your main event, which I think was kind of wasted, but at the same time, it was good. You had your Shield main event, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose. And Dean Ambrose coming out on top, which I give him credit for. I felt that was the right move at the time. And, you know, like I said, that feels more like a WrestleMania main event to me. But at the same time, it was epic. And as long as it happens, it happens. And as long as it's good, it's good. You know, that's fine. So I was fine with it being the main event of a B pay-per-view. And it almost makes a B pay-per-view not feel like a B pay-per-view in a way. But next up, we have my favorite yearly pay-per-view. And my personal favorite pay-per-view 2016, but I'm ranking it at number two. We have Survivor Series 2016. Like I said, it's my favorite, but I do think there is one more better. Uh, you had an absolute epic of an elimination tag match with Chris Jericho, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens, and Braun Strowman versus Shane McMahon, Dean Ambrose, Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, and AJ Styles. This was just an absolutely fucking epic match, um, which I didn't expect. Uh, this really did kind of feel like an unexpected good pay-per-view. I really wasn't that pumped for it going in. And yeah, I am probably one of the few people that enjoyed the main event. I hate Goldberg. I really do. But this was at a time where Brock Lesnar literally was unstoppable booking-wise. So it was really cool to have this shock main event. I really think Brock was going to go over clean here. I really did. So it was a nice surprise, but in a good way. And I think they should have probably just left at that. But, you know, the WrestleMania match, you know, turned out to be pretty good. So in a way, this was an effective rivalry. So yeah, I really, um, I enjoyed this pay-per-view. You know, the women's tag match was good. You had the really entertaining tag team elimination match. So overall, this was just a great pay-per-view. And number one, I almost feel like this is kind of underrated. Like, I mean, even the back, even the back says the greatest Money in the Bank pay-per-view in history. I think 2011 is better, but... If it weren't for 2011, I would say this is the best Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Money in the Bank 2016, I say, is the best pay-per-view of 2016. Um, like I said, not the best Money in the Bank pay-per-view, but I'd say it's number two. Uh, you had AJ Styles and John Cena for the first time ever in WWE. And then we had your um, World Heavyweight Championship contract. Uh, Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Cesaro, Dean Ambrose, and Del Rio in your Money in the Bank ladder match, which Dean Ambrose eventually won, and I do really like that shot there. And then your main events, kind of leading off of um, Extreme Rules, we had Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns. And then um, Roman was champion, Seth wins, Dean Ambrose cashes in. All three members of the Shield were champion at one point, at one time, in one pay-per-view. I'm not the biggest Shield fan, but even me, even I can say, this was epic and just gave you the chills. I mean, look at that. Perfect. Perfect ending to the pay-per-view. And to me, it's really not that hard to rank this number one. You can disagree with my list, but number one, it's hard to, really hard to say that's not number one. Just an absolutely phenomenal pay-per-view. So next up, of course, I'll be doing 2015 and then 14 and going, counting down probably to like the late 80s. I mean, 85, I think, had what, two? Had the big event in WrestleMania. So yeah, we'll see. But I hope you guys enjoyed this 
uh, pay-per-view ranking. For now, this has been the DVD Freak. Peace out.